I'd like to call the meeting to order. This meeting is being recorded. I would ask if there's anyone else recording this meeting. Could you please join me in the pledge? <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, look at this crowd here tonight. Under citizens' comments. Uh, yeah, uh, Mark Bernal, Warfield Street. I'd like to thank the board for the uh, moment of silence he gave to uh, my dad. And, uh, and in the middle school, inside and outside, with the uh, baseball and I don't know if you have a football stadium or anything, but um, got a section available for the vision of here, like in the front, maybe like 15 spots. And so it's also in the um, inside the gym too. And do you know if the uh, athletic department is working on a uh, Robin High Seniors uh, football team to have a Thanksgiving Day game? I missed that. That was a, doesn't seem like Thanksgiving without having going to a Auburn uh, football game, Thanksgiving. Sure. So um, in terms of the seating, I know we are in the process right now at looking at um, stadium seating for outside as well as inside has been selected. Everything meets all ADA requirements, but we've got a meeting next week, so I can certainly confirm that for you. Okay, I'll be there anyways. Okay. Um, in terms of the football, that was actually a two-year agreement that we had when we lost Oxford as our opponent for Thanksgiving. So there are um, efforts underway to try and secure another team, but we don't have anything confirmed yet. So we do mm -hmm. hope to announce that yeah. soon. Yeah, that was at the, uh, the last Oxford-Auburn uh, game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. How about, are they going to be doing, like, even in at the uh, high school stadium, does anyone have, like, the, the outline to give a section? For the vision appeared. Um, I'd have to actually check. Through Joe Fahey, maybe. Sure, through either Mr. Fahey or our athletic director, we can certainly look into that. Doesn't have to be big, but just you. enough so that you know it's front row. You, not quite. It's just a lot easier. Understood. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Page. Yes, Mark. I just want to say that I, I was a very good friend of your father's and worked with him quite a bit. He had done so much for this town and the churches and the seniors of this town. He was an unbelievable person. He always gave and gave and gave. He yeah. never asked for anything back. He was going to be highly missed. Oh, yeah. And I just want to recognize that while you're here. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Wayne. <coughs> thank you. Thanks for your comments. So, <coughs> Do we have any other citizens' comments? Right. Seeing none, we will move on to special recognitions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We have a number of special recognitions this evening, which is very exciting, and that was probably one of the best pledges of allegiance that we've had in a long time with all of you helping from the that audience. Was excellent. Very nice. Um, so the first item I wanted to make you aware of is uh, Mrs. Lopez is here with a team of fine young men who represented Julia Bancroft in the Auburn Public Schools extremely well, having taken first place. So I'm going to turn it over to Mrs. Lopez, who will introduce us to the team from JB and fill us in on the great news. Absolutely. I'm here first. Uh, thank you for having us this evening. I'm here to ask your permission to take this team of robotics. They competed in a VEX IQ challenge on March 8th at Quinn Sigamon Community College. They're a team of fourth grade students. There's six of them. They're the, the Diamond Crystals. Uh, they did a fantastic job and they won an overall award called the Excellence Award, which means they placed in many of the categories that they had to compete in during the course of the day. Uh, they did a fantastic and outstanding job. I'll let them answer any of those questions, but I'm here to ask permission to take them to what they were invited to as a result, which was the World Championship in Louisville, Kentucky. So they will be competing against their peers uh, in <coughs> elementary school from teams around the globe in Louisville, Kentucky on April 15th through the 18th. So I'm here to request that field trip uh, before you give your answer. I think you should hear from the boys and they have lots to explain or tell you if you like to hear anything further. So boys, come on up. I have my five team members here. Hopefully the sixth will come. Come on over. Or the microphone is over here. So you can 
introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Matthew Hubble. I'm Ralph Capaldi. I'm Nathan LaBeouf. I'm Neil Grovenor. And I'm Anthony Lloyd. Did you want to hear? They had today um, dictated a few things about the, the parts of the competition, but I didn't know if, rather than that, if you'd like them to speak to questions or if you'd like them to tell you a little bit about what they had to do. So it's really your preference. What would you like? Mr. Page? I'd like to have them explain it to us and all that. Okay. If they don't mind. Sure, not at all. Neil, why don't you start? So, um, we. First of all, we um we had gone in this kit to build a robot and um a booklet that we would um read the instructions on. It was just pictures and um so we built our robot by looking at p pictures and how it showed us what pieces to put on. They kind mm -hmm. of look like Legos. And how we um when we finished building it, we would start testing it by um, using the course that would be in the challenge and then we would test the robot on and see how many points we would score and how you would score points is by either pushing clot, um, blocks into the scoring zone mm -hmm. or either grabbing the blocks with um, this claw that's attached on the robot that would pick up blocks and stack them on their matching color and so yeah, we would do this. We'd see how many points it scored. We'd go back and fix it. And we would also, like, when we'd test it once and see if it's kind of fine, we'd start modifying the robot by, like, adding things to it. So we added a plow. So then we could push blocks into the scoring zone. And if we, pretty much if we didn't um, build the plow and we just used the back, to push blocks on, the blocks might slide to the side and like just move away and we won't be able to score any points. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Neil. That's all I got. Okay. Thanks, Neil. Thanks. This is Peyton Reno. <laughs> and you can either... I'm um, Peyton Skopetsky. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Peyton <laughs> Skopetsky. Sorry. Um, Peyton Skopetsky. And you can explain to the school committee either the component that we talked about or you can you can speak to that part um, and read whatever you mm. like. Um, after we built the robot, we um, modified it and um, we started working on an autonomous program, which is when um, we, we can't have a controller and there's no drivers. Um, so and we um, measured um, how far, we wanted to like move forward in inches, so we would, like place the robot down. So if we wanted to move forward 12 inches, we would click and drag a block that said move forward, and then we were, and then we would change the measurement to 12 in inches. And if we wanted it to mo turn like turn left 45 degrees, we would um, click and drag a block over, and then it w and then it would say turn right 45 degrees. Yeah, and um, we would download it to the robot's brain, where it, where all of its like programs and memory is, and then um, we could hit like start, and then it would do the um, things we put it on, put on the um, autonomous program. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ralph, want to explain the, the journal for them? We had to have a journal, and we had to put everything that we did in the journal. If we missed something, we could be disqualified, and we'd be disqualified because all the modifications that we did, so all the changes had to be in the booklet. Because if they weren't in the booklet, um, the judges could disqualify us before, for that reason. And we also wrote about the STEM project that Anthony's going to present soon. So we put all of our sources in there. We also put, um, it's an um, engineering journal. And in the engineering journal, we also put all of our ideas and everything else that we thought of that would be useful. Anthony? Excellent. Anthony? Okay. Can you read or speak off the cuff? You know everything about it. Hi. Our STEM presentation was originally about electrical engineering. 
And if you're wondering, STEM is science, technology, engineering, and math. Then we thought about conserving energy or saving it. Eventually, we found a lot of information about wind turbines. The wind turbine works the opposite of a fan. A fan uses electricity to generate wind. A wind turbine uses wind to generate electricity. We based our STEM presentation on the research we did about wind turbines. At first, we did not have enough information, so we did more research. We made a PowerPoint presentation. Each of us had something to say. Matthew introduced us and our topic. Neil told the judges about the inside of, the, of a wind turbine. Peyton explained how engineers improved on the blades of wind turbines and about the aerodynamics of the blades. Nathan described the problems described the problems that wind turbines face. Ralph revealed why wind turbines were a better source of energy than oil or gas. I Finished with a description of how wind turbines have changed over time. We wrapped up our presentation by showing the judges our sources. Thanks, Anthony. <coughs> Nathan, do you want to explain the rules of the game? Uh, yes. <coughs> the rules of the game was you have 60 seconds and there are 36 blocks on one end of the course and you have to push as many blocks to the other side of the course in a minute. And uh, and if you pushed all the blocks, if you had enough time, you could like stack more blocks, which would multiply your um, score by how many blocks you stacked and how many blocks there was. <laughs> like if you stacked one block, it would be like two times one which would be two points for stacking that one block. Do you want to add anything else about the driving piece? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> 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 they prepared all this today, just so you know. They kind of dictated things, and then we went over a few things. So, But they're, mm. they're, they're good about this. When you are pushing the box, you have 60 seconds, and every 30 seconds, well, there's a 35 um, second time limit, and if you don't hand your controller off to the partner, um, like you could get like disqualified. Can you explain how you worked with another team? And like you work with another team, and you try not to get in their way. So like one. One team could be stacking the whole time, and another team could be pushing the whole time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks. It's basically the high rise challenge. It uh, works a lot on collaboration. So the boys had to work with teams from um, all over southern New England, and they didn't know who they were teamed with until that morning. So oftentimes they had to quickly strategize all right, well, we're doing this, you do this. And as the competition went further throughout the day, they got to know each other a little bit. So that was also a nice piece that they were able to do. And the autonomous programming that they didn't spoke to, um, they were able to uh, accomplish a great deal and score a lot of points by uh, programming the robot without any direction, just hitting start and having the robot do exactly what they wanted to based on the formulas that they inputted into uh, the program under the direction of their coach, Christine Lloyd. Are there any nice. other questions? Or? Before we open it up to comments, I'd like to get them um, their first well-deserved round of applause. <laughs> That one was just for your presentation tonight, and then we'll give you a little more at the end for actually winning the contest and moving on. How's that? A couple rounds of applause. All right. Do we have any comments? Sarah I have a Clinton? question. Um, is this an after-school program? It was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> it was. We started, the boys started, you can come a little bit closer to the microphone yeah, if they want to speak to you. <laughs> Uh, the after school program had begun in January, uh, went for several weeks. They met on Thursday afternoons. There were 22 students in attendance and they broke down into different teams and each of the teams had their own programming, their own STEM research project, their own um, ability to build a robot and then from that they all went to the competition and they did excellent and these boys did outstanding. Yeah, so this is all volunteer basis and yes. yeah, just it's incredible. Yes. I just want to say great job, and you guys did a fantastic job at public speaking. You're going to be doing it for the rest of your life, so great job. But very proud to have you guys in our town, and good luck. So excited for you guys. And I have a question. When you go to Kentucky, do you do the same thing all over again, or is it a whole new challenge? It's the, uh, it's yeah. the same uh, challenge, high rise. Yeah. But we might be working with different teams. Sure. And they might have different pieces in those. And languages. We're going to have to learn different languages. Oh, because my it's goodness. It's a world championship. <laughs> oh, cool. We're going to have to learn languages. I don't know how many other countries. countries. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be very busy. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I've, I've traveled a bit since I retired from teaching in Auburn. Yeah. And I have found that most of the other countries their students learn English. So you probably will be all right. Because I could name you 15 countries right now, and in every one they spoke beautiful English, especially the students, because they teach it in school starting very young. So you'll probably be just fine. And I wish you lots of luck. Thank you. I would like to say congratulations. And I think the, the language will come easy after what you've already done. So be proud of yourselves. Keep up doing the good work that you're doing. And thanks for making Auburn look good. Yeah. You're all, great job, great job. I learned more from you people tonight <laughs> than I knew anything about it in the last five, 10 minutes. And I want to thank you and keep it up and I will be voting for you to go to on the trip. I would just say that we've been, as a committee and as a town, we've been impressed and excited ever since we got the news the day that you guys won. And uh, we know how much work it takes to get something like this accomplished. To go to a contest like that, something that, so a contest that you've never been to, all the work that you've done together with your teachers, you, you make us proud. You make the town proud. You make the, the entire community proud and us as a school committee proud. So yes, we'll support you in this endeavor and we're as excited as you are about the trip that you're about to go on. And I know that you guys will continue to work hard as you've been doing to get to this point, right? Absolutely. <laughs> well, I will be supporting your trip as well. And as I said, very excited about it. So I would entertain a motion. I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? Absolutely. Any questions? I just have a couple questions about the logistics. Certainly. Um, just for, for those watching at home and, and who, who may take part in a trip like this in the future, um, who will be going along with the students? A parent Chevron's? will be accompanying each one of the children on this trip. Okay. Uh, actually, the parents are here and present. Mm -hmm. uh, each one of them will be traveling with their sons and with them the entire time. And anyone from the district? I'm hoping to go and support them throughout the time that they're there, for sure. That would be excellent. I believe it's April school vacation, right? It April abuts four. April school vacation, <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, if you can't make it, maybe I can go. <laughs> <laughs> and you, got, you got a meeting that week. <laughs> <laughs> and um, <clears throat> I would just like to say that I'd like to thank the, the, the people at home, um, fellow community members, people that were involved within sports, everyone who, who pitched in to make this trip happen mm -hmm. because it didn't take long. Um, you guys set a goal as far as how much money it would take to get con to Kentucky and I believe it happened pretty quick. Um, it was amazing. Four um, days a was great it? parent group two put days, that together days. and in two days um, through wow. the generosity of businesses and personal donations um, we were able to do that. When I had spoken with the parents and, sp and in speaking with the students, it was definitely an all or nothing. We 
competed as a team and they needed to stay as a team and to be able to go to Kentucky that way and the parents stepped up to the plate and put that together and through the the real great generosity of this community we're able to send them it really does it speaks to the type of community mm -hmm. that we have here and um, it's only getting stronger by the looks of this so again mm -hmm. proud proud to be um, proud to be a member of this community and proud to have you guys representing us in Kentucky I'm through the chair also kudos to Christine Lloyd I see her way back there hiding um, she really <laughs> spearheaded that um, the whole fundraising she aspect did. and she didn't she run she was the, the coach as the well. coach Christine? yes so it was her um, mathematical, science, technological expertise that brought all of the students this great after school program in her time as well. Mm, that's great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Any further questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 It is a vote. Good luck. Oh, if I'm I could sorry. just say something, good luck to all of you. You did a terrific job, as all the committee members said, really making Auburn proud. And this has been quite a year for Auburn. And, and certainly you boys going down to the bo World Championship um, makes us all very excited. And thanks to the parents and certainly Mrs. Lloyd, uh, Mrs. Lopez, for supporting this. And I'm sure that it will be continuing at Swanson Road Intermediate School next year, right? We hope so. Absolutely. They're already talking about it. So oh, good. <laughs> good. I think we need Great. to get creative. That's good. <laughs> Great. Good luck, guys. Thanks. Bye -bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Would you like guys like to come around here and say hello to us and shake our hands on your way out? Job. Oh, you're welcome. Great job. 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 Great like they want to stay. No, <laughs> oh, that's quite all right. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, so this is for you to sign if you want. Just right there. That's so cute. <laughs> Fourth grade. They can come. Oh, clean out room. No kidding, right? <laughs> We now move on with special recognitions. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Unfortunately, she's not here this evening, but the next time she returns, we can certainly congratulate her. Taylor Folkrod, one of our school committee representatives, um, is the recipient of the Daughters of the American Revolution Award. Um, this is an award given annually, and it speaks to qualities of dependability, service, patriotism, and leadership. Uh, Taylor does a tremendous job. I don't know if you realize this, but she is the lead in Legally Blonde, upcoming as well. So she um, also is uh, part of the Rocket Band. She is multi-talented, so congratulations mm -hmm. to her. Not an easy act to follow, um, <laughs> but I am very excited to share with you that after a long and very thorough process, um, I'm very pleased to recommend to you Rosemary Reedy. She is currently a reading specialist at the Bryn Mawr School. Um, Rosemary applied for and after a two-tiered process um, was selected as a unanimous candidate to serve as our NAC Director of Pupil Services. Uh, Rosemary has truly um, shined as a reading specialist and I have every confidence that she will uh, do the same in this new role and we look forward to her hopefully assuming it and staying for a very long time yes, in the Auburn you, Public Dr. Schools. Pinnell, thank you. I'd just like to say thank you to everyone um, to officially meet you this evening and I would also just like to add that I am very excited to be joining Dr. Brunell and such a dynamic leadership team in the Auburn Public Schools so I'm really excited and um, thank you. Excellent. I would entertain a motion. To recommend. Endorse the import appointment. I'll we'll make that motion. We'll make a motion to endorse the appointment of Rosemary Reedy as the Director of People Services for Auburn Public Schools effective July 1. Do I have a second? Oh, thank you, Mr. Page. Mm -hmm. Any discussion, comments, questions? No. 
Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Hey, nice to see you again. Congratulations. Congratulations. Nice to meet you. Welcome aboard. Yes. Congratulations. Welcome. Oh, thanks. They take the vote? No, because you just need to take the vote. Give a motion a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 I can't leave that motion wide open. Yeah. She's going to be terrific. I yeah, uh, also wanted to let you know, I, I share this regularly, it, it's wonderful um, to recognize our students when they shine academically, athletically, uh, musically, or otherwise. Um, also important as part of the athletic program is how our students represent us. Um, we saw the young men tonight do a fine job in, in representing themselves, their school, and the district. Uh, Mr. Davis, who's filling in for Mr. Garno, notified me that both the girls varsity soccer and the varsity basketball teams were recipients of the sportsmanship award so i think that it deserves uh, recognition and credit that they uh, made it to the district playoffs but also what that speaks to me is that um, they represented themselves in the school and district well so i congratulate them on that any comments excellent great news and then um, on a sadder note, would like to share with you and then ask for a moment of silence at the end um, that Mr. In Memory of uh, Reverend Paul W. Lemire, who passed away on Saturday, March 14th at the age of 79. Father Lemire was a chemistry teacher at Auburn High for 23 years, retiring in June of 1985. His wife, Mary, with whom he had five children, passed away in 1982. After his retirement from the Auburn school system, Paul was called into his second vocation and was ordained to the Holy Priesthood on June 3, 1989 by Bishop Timothy Harrington. He was at one time the senior priest in residence in Auburn prior to his last residency of St. Anne's in Shrewsbury. Besides his wife, a son, dead, David Red Lemire, predeceased him. So if we could have a brief moment of silence in Reverend Lemire's memory. Thank you. <clears throat> Seeing no student representatives here, are we expecting any? I believe not. I okay. don't know why, though, yeah. We will move right along. I'd seek approval of the minutes of March 4th. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Go ahead. We'll make a motion to approve the minutes March 4th. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 There's a vote. We now move on to the superintendent's report. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chia. The first item now that we have you have approved the trip to Louisville, Kentucky, is the public hearing on the naming of the Auburn Middle School field. So in order to do so, um, you will need a motion to formally open the public hearing before discussion can be had. But do note that it has been duly advertised in the newspaper uh, as well as on local cable. I would entertain a motion to open the public hearing for the naming of the middle school field. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Do we have anyone? Yes, we do. A return guest. Whoops. 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 It's easy here. It's okay. Um, uh, Mark Bell, 4 Field Street. I'd like to request that... Um, one of the fields be named uh, Bill Parquet, uh, former athletic director of Auburn. And um, in August of 1975, uh, he was a lifesaver to me. Uh, I was delivering newspapers up on uh, Packetchuck Hill. And I had done this many times before, but there was a breezeway with a mailbox, and I misjudged, and my arm went through a glass window. And there was no one home there, and I uh, started walking home, because I knew some shortcuts up on the hill, on Packetchuck Hill. and. Uh, he stopped me and took care of me, and I'm okay. I'm alive, really. He's a lifesaver. And that's back then when you had the old police wagons, the police station. Yeah, yeah. The police, was it the crows or in the ambulance was one unit. Okay, any questions? Does anyone have any questions? That's quite the story, Mac. I'm glad he saved you. Mm. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, no, but we would like to thank you for your comments tonight. And um, we're, I'm also glad that you survived that uh, 
day of delivering newspapers, and uh, we will certainly take that into consideration. We've got a couple others that that we'll be taking a look at, as well as um, some of the backing, I guess, uh, stories or history that go along with the others and yours. Okay. So we, we appreciate your comments. When are you make a final decision, right? Or are you going to do a couple, you're going to deliberate, you know what I mean? Hopefully this evening, SBC is looking for uh, um, the sign needs to be sign. put up, so right. we will we will try to make that happen tonight. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, do we continue this public hearing and discuss the other names? Yes. So, I'm if you'd forth. like, I can share with you information. Um, other names that were um, brought forward were the Granger Field, the Randall Field the Granger slash Randall Field, the Carrie L. Granger Field. Uh, two individuals or um, one individual and institution that notified us. Um, the Masonic Lodge um, did notify us that they would respectfully request that a field be named the Carrie L. Granger Field. Um, what I shared with you also in the packet was information that Mr. Ethier shared with us um, in consideration of both the Granger and Randall names. Um, so with your approval, I will just read aloud uh, what he had shared. Carrie L. Granger was a teacher at Gate Lane, Gates Lane School in Worcester. She lived at Randallwood with the Randall family, which is the property, uh, part of the property that we are on here. She was the executor of Randallwood, making sure the town got the land for Randall School with ample space for the children to play. Randallwood's main crop was gladiola that were sold at the family's flower shop in Worcester. The Randall house still stands. It is used by Crystal Caves. Uh, and he closes with, thank you for considering keeping her name alive. So those were the names that came um, before us, or before you, I should say. Now, I'm a little confused. Is she connected to the Mr. Granger that we were talking about? So there was a question asked about that, and uh, what Mr. Ethier indicated, he thought that there may be a family relationship, um, not a sister, though. Okay, um, no, it would be different her. generations. Yeah, yeah. Um, but um, he thought that there was a relation. He wasn't certain. He indicated mm -hmm. perhaps a cousin, but it wasn't certain. Okay, because George had thought something about we had don some Granger land had been donating to this site, but maybe it was the Carrie Granger donating the Randall land? That's what uh, Mr. That's Ethier what has cleared up saying. now, yes. yes. So actually the town is my our understanding that the town actually purchased this land for the sum of I think $2,000 um, from the Randall family. It seems though that then she, um, Carrie Granger, was put in charge of the estate moving forward. Hmm. Now, we, we have two fields we can name? We do. We have the um, yes. large field on which the students will play, and there's also a practice field as well. Okay, and the large field's the one's going to have the sign. We, Correct. That, that's the... Correct, that will have the sign. And then the smaller one, although I will say this morning at our construction meeting, I mentioned to um, the members there, in anticipation of a potential question, is could we, though, have a small, some sort of a recognition sign um, so they are working up a price that would go before the SBC to at least have it um, noted the name of the practice field as well. Okay. Any other comments? So did I at one point hear one of the submissions to be um, Randall Granger or was that's the, those two were never put together? There is a list on there. there is one oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I was looking yeah. at this other paper. Okay. <clears throat> well, I would um, entertain a motion, look for open for suggestions here. I would like to see at this point you can entertain motions. Okay. So you need to close the public hearing before you entertain motions. Okay. I'll make that motion to close the public hearing. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. There's a vote. Now, do I have 
a motion or any comments, ideas? So, uh, if we could just talk a little more. So, sure. the land belonged to the Randall family, and Carrie Granger somehow, maybe she married into the family or something, but she was there at the house, mm -hmm. so she got to be executor. So she was actually giving the Randall land to the school. Because it doesn't seem like it it was her land. She was the executor, unless this executor was or became her land. So my understanding is that um, the town actually purchased the land from the Randall family. Is that what you got from okay. Mrs. Gabry? Um, and that at some point Carrie Granger lived in their home um, and then wanted to be sure that the Randall children had ample space to play the land out in the back here. Where is the Randall field? Right. Just, go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm just thinking as everybody else is trying to think of which way to go with this because there's so many good ones on this one. Yeah. Is I was thinking about the Granger Randall field because it puts them both together and it doesn't um, single out one Granger but because there's a couple that are involved that I think it should be named on the field. So if we do it this way, we're, we're doing them both mm -hmm. instead of just singling one out. That's my opinion. Hmm. But then. That leaves us with no name, perhaps, Actually, for the practice field. Unless we want to entertain um, the citizens. No, you still have brought forth for the Paquette mm -hmm. field. I mean, really, because we really have been given three. Or you can just go up to. Oh, I'm sorry. How, how, how about this? How about if, if I do receive a motion for the Granger Randall field? <coughs> And that is accepted as the name. And and then maybe we can look into a name for next week for the other field, or are we looking at having the sign made? Is there a deadline on the second sign as well? Um, I would say through the chair that um, the time is of the essence that they need um, to name this. I don't know if you would be interested in a, a recommendation um, from me. I think it's important that um, the field, because it will be referenced that way by students and, right. and mm -hmm. families in town, um, I'm just not sure if that's not um, an awful long name for mm. a field. I wonder if in recognition and, and certainly in, in due deference to uh, Mr. Banal's recommendation and, and to the great deed that Mr. Uh, Paquette did for him, um, this property has long been known with the school here as Randall School, and even right. though there isn't Randall here any longer, um, if perhaps the uh, synthetic turf field was named the Randall Field and the practice field was named the Granger Field, I think you're still recognizing the two um, names, and we could, you know, have a, des have a sign designed by Lamar Pagano or, or their um, subcontractors. It still maintains the two names that have always been used for this property in the fields. I think, um, I think I would be in support of that. I think both names will be represented fairly, and, and I and and, and again, um, with taking no exception. To, to the citizens' comments, I would say that w without um, without these people, we we wouldn't have these fields. They wouldn't they wouldn't be ours to right now be be building on and, and, and haven't been played on all, all of these years that they've been open for use. Mm -hmm. Mr. Page, I just want to clarify this again. You are saying that one be the Granger Field and the other one Randall Field. Yes, and I, I can remember that. And whether. Um, you know, I mean, typically what would happen, or we could request this with the S um, through Lamar Pagano, mm -hmm. is that on the sign, um, you know, if it was going to be a wooden sign, they certainly could, you know, have a brief descriptor if it for the Granger field. If it was, you know, the Carrie L. Granger, um, she was the, mm -hmm. they, they actually had a field out here named after her. The Masonic Lodge named a field that they let the United Soccer use for years. And that was, that was the Carrie Granger field. Uh, and that's why it's their request to have one of the fields named to continue that, because that's what they had named it in her honor. Um, you know, I, I think that generally names get shortened. We talked a lot about with the, mm. the Swanton Road. So I think ultimately they would be known as the Randall Field and the Granger Field. Okay. 
I think, like is that. what they would be named as. Referred to. Through the chair, I do like the idea of actually putting a bit of a descriptor. Mm. You know, I'm sure a lot of folks who live in Auburn just don't know the history all right. through. Right. So right. I would put it. I would try to go mm -hmm. as much as we can. Mm -hmm. Can I make a motion to do that? You can, absolutely. I'll make that motion. Which fields? Um, the, the largest synthetic field, only that this is known Maybe as Randall. Grand. I would call it the Randall field, and the practice field is the Granger field. It's my recommendation. Are we going to do Granger field, or are we going to yeah, carry Granger? Yeah, do it as a practice, not the... No, I think the Granger, the Granger field is better because it covers both of them. You know, it's not just singling one person. Oh, you both for Granger families. Carrie Granger right. and the Mr. Granger. Right. So I just say the Granger, the field, instead of saying just her. Yeah. They'll this be. way we're covering both of them in one name. Mm -hmm. the so you're saying the Randall Field for the main field and yeah. Granger Field for the practice field, and then that right. one Granger covers both Granger people. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Okay. I'll make that motion to that effect. Do I have a second? I'd second that. Any comments? I just say that, that I like that idea as, as long as I've been in town and it's not nearly as long as some of you. Um, it's Ben Randall Field mm -hmm. and I do like the way it's identified and I like the way that we, we've spoken of a, a plaque to signify exactly why it's called that and I think that'll work out great. And um, <clears throat> as far as the other name that we was suggested in citizens' comments, possibly there's something else that we could do to, to honor um, Mr. Paquette. And, and He's we'll still alive, too, so. Oh, okay. okay. He's not. Okay. I know, that's what's what <laughs> All right, well. I, I discussed it a lot with the superintendent. Okay. He's still, yeah. Well. Still on Packet Chalk Hill. We're not, we're we're not rushing you, Mr. Paquette. <laughs> <laughs> but we will try to come up with a way to honor you. <laughs> Any other comments? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's very good and it'll work out well. Yes, I, I think, think so, so too. too. All in favor? Aye. 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 It is a vote. Thank you. The next item, the menu, uh, we share this with you on an annual basis and it becomes increasingly, it's always been impressive, I, I think, and I hope that you see it the same. This includes. Um, all of the variety of options that are available to the teachers, if you recall, it's not only Auburn Public Schools, but also the Leicester Public Schools. And I offer sincere um, thanks and kudos to Dr. Lose for the work that she puts uh, together. Certainly her assistant helps Mrs. Flynn, um, but it promises to be an outstanding day as it has been every year. Uh, give Mr. Bernal a hand. Yeah. Excuse yeah. me. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> the next item is the Future Ready Schools Pledge. This has actually um, come out from the United States Department of Education and really is very much in alignment with the strategic plan and the initiatives that we have underway in the district. Uh, by signing this, and what it notes in here is that it uh, to foster and lead a culture of digital learning within our schools, helping families and schools transition to high-speed connectivity, uh, empowering educators through professional learning opportunities, accelerating progress toward universal access for all students to quality devices, and providing access to quality digital content, as well as offering digital tools to help students and families reach higher, and mentoring other districts and helping them transition to digital learning. Uh, I think one of many things that we can be <coughs> proud of in the district is our um, very forward thinking in terms of the one-to-one -one iPad initiative um, that will be expanded to grades 6 to 12. So it is my intention to um, sign on to this and it actually will reap some benefits being able to attend, um, get some free resources, but I wanted to make you aware of it and uh, I think it's a great a great indicator for Auburn. It seems like we're already doing it. So We are. We, we are. might as well. That's right. That's right. Any other comments? Moving right along. 
The public hearing um, is st will still be held on April 1st, but if you'll remember, I had um, shared with you that due to a printing error, it was actually noted in, in some recent publications, um, the March 24th special town meeting will still take place for Articles 1 through 4 and 9 and 11. Articles 5, 6, 7, and 8, though, will be moved to uh, April 1st at 7 o'clock. Uh, my intention would be when I do a presentation, um, as I typically do for any of the town meetings, would be to um, go over and explain the need for each of these articles. It was explained in a notification sent to town meeting the second time with the adjusted time of our public hearing. Um, but most notably, while all of the school department's articles are uh, one of great importance, articles five and six are the two that speak to the um, the MSBA accelerated repair projects, which has the potential to save the town between $1.5 and $1.7 million, will not require any additional borrowing, will require some um, repurposing of some previously approved CIP funds, uh, noted in Articles 3 and 4, but assuming those are approved, I would encourage and respectfully request the town meeting approve 5 and 6 as well. Any comments? So we're going to attend the March 24th meeting, and we're going to meet at 6.30 ahead of time. Yes. And then the eight, we're going to have an April 1st meeting because of the second town meeting? Correct. And we always had a school committee meeting that night right. in our public hearing. So the public hearing has been moved to 7.45. Okay. So we're coming, we're going to be at the high school for what time? Um, we have not set a oh. meeting prior to the April 1st meeting. That could be something to, for discussion tonight oh, okay. if, if you'd like to do that. Typically in the past, we've always had a meeting at 6.30 before a town meeting in case there's any business to discuss, so I would recommend that we do that. The other piece that you could do is, since there will be some items um, on the school committee agenda, we could perhaps hold that even at 6 or 6.30 and get those done prior to town meeting and then do the public hearing and we could be finished the meeting, if that works. Okay. I was confused about the, we were going to two meetings, but we mm. are. We are. Okay. Yeah. So you want a motion for the April 1st, um, school committee meeting at 6.30? Yes. On that night, and then we can, if there's business, we discuss it. If not, we'll just recess until the end of the meeting in case we have to go back in. Correct, because there will there are some items on the school. We'll keep it a light agenda, so whether we can start at 6 or 6.30, um, we should be able to get all of the non-public hearing items completed prior to town meeting at 7, and then our public hearing at 7.45. So what do you want the um, time? You want it at 6 or 6.30? Uh, through the chair, that that's up to the committee. Whatever time would work. I, I'm not sure if six o'clock start time is no, is feasible for people or not. I can do it. Is, are we gonna need all that time? I mean, are we gonna be sitting I, there doing nothing? I, I don't know. We don't know we because it, it depends on the agenda. Yeah, yeah it depends on the we agenda. Could probably, yeah. We could probably adjust the agenda either way. Sure, we could. Absolutely. Oh, I see. Yep. Mm -hmm. I can do either. Okay. I could. I could make six o'clock. Okay, so I'll make the motion for six o'clock. Just, just to be safe. That way, if we, if okay. we do no. run into some things no. that come up before the meeting, we'll have plenty of time to talk. No one do that. <laughs> no. Right. right. Any other discussion? Yeah. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. Right. Okay. I did include in your packet the. Um, original letter that was sent to the town meeting members inviting them as we always do to the public hearing and then the follow-up one that was sent um, noting the different times so I included those as FYI's for you I also in here uh, included for you an update we have a district quarterly newsletter actually that will go home to our students families tomorrow and you will all receive a copy of that but just outline for you the uh, I know that you are aware of it, but the tremendous amount of work that is going on behind the scenes 
Um, there's uh, rarely a day that goes by that there is not some work that is done on making sure that we are going to be ready for and planning for the many transitions that are going to be taking place. In fact, it was a topic of discussion as our, at a leadership team meeting uh, earlier today. In addition to all of those, with the closure of JB and Mary D that's likely to occur, um, there is a tribute video that has been created as a um, closure team. We actually viewed it uh, last week at our meeting. We're making some additional tweaks. Uh, we had originally interviewed, as I shared with you last time, Mr. Clifford Granger. Uh, we added uh, another woman who uh, is just shy of 90 who had gone to the Julia Bancroft. So she has been added into that. I need to go and do uh, update my voiceover uh, to include for that. So that will be one of the things that we'll be able to share with you on the first, although it's quite likely that that actually may even begin playing on the local cable prior to that. Our plan is to have it out on local cable. Uh, we do have t-shirts made. We actually have order forms that we hope to send home tomorrow of t-shirts from both Julie Bancroft and Mary D. Thanks to Baypath. We have buttons that have magnets that, um, on them that can be put up on refrigerators and beautiful note cards that they're creating too for sale. So uh, and we have letters being mailed to Auburn uh, retirees who may to let them know about the April 26th. Uh, open house dates as well as an opportunity if they want to buy any keepsakes and um, it thank you to uh, Mrs. Harrington as well as Mrs. Adamiak the district one and two PTOs are going to uh, help facilitate um, those order forms that come in so uh, the prices are very we're keeping the prices very inexpensive on these items but I think we'll have a lot of people wanting these keepsakes yep. for their schools good stuff <coughs> Uh, just as an additional reminder, I did do a one call this evening. The phones were uh, ringing like crazy when you first may have come in um, to remind everybody that the bus applications are due on April 1st and any late application uh, will be assessed a late fee of $50. Even if a, a family um, is uncertain as to whether or not they qualify for free or reduced lunch or whether or not they'll be assessed the fee, everybody must fill out the application form. Page. How do you feel it's going now, Mary Ellen, or can you tell? Uh, I actually checked earlier this week, and we were <clears> just <throat> under 600 applications at the time. That was on Monday, so some have come in certainly since then. But we typically get 1,100 in a year, so we were just okay. over the 50%. No, no, no. Yeah. We had quite a bit to go. So um, it's two weeks from today. There are still two weeks right, left. Right. Uh, but with this notification, it will go home again tomorrow. So hopefully they will all come in. <laughs> typically we get a, a huge rush of them towards the end. Thank so you. hopefully that's the case. Could you just um, <coughs> repeat the, the <laughs> protocol? Do they, can they get it online if they? They can. So they can download it from the Auburn Public Schools website. Uh, it will go home in an email <coughs> notification tomorrow, and it's probably gone home every two weeks since January or so. It has. Um, we've sent home a hard copy with every family. It was actually mailed home to the high school and middle school students with either a progress report or a report card. Um, they can call the school if they don't have one and have one sent home. So well, they, they can, can call here as well. Call or too. show up here at West Street. Correct. Fill out, fill out the application and hand it in right then. Right. Mm -hmm. And exactly. along with the application, they have to hand in the money, right? They do. They do have to mm -hmm. hand in the hundred dollars. There's pro. Is there no way to charge it? They have to write a check. They do. They would need to write a check or yeah. cash, and they would receive a receipt for yeah. it, um, unless somebody or money order, unless um, someone already qualifies for free reduced lunch, or if their home is um, outside of the perimeter, um, and they may not have to pay a fee, but the application has to be in. Oh, I see. Yeah, exactly. Oh, so if someone lives far enough away, they just have they to don't get the application. Have, if they're in elementary school, if exactly. Elementary, right. right. Yep. Exactly. Through grade six. Through grade six. six. So I'm sorry, through grade six. Grade six. Yes. Yep. Because the law doesn't, it starts with seven that you don't mm -hmm. have to. Correct. Right. Yes. Yep. Ms. Harrington? Um, are they doing the transfer bus next year? Do you know? We actually are waiting until we get, um, so if people have questions on that, I would encourage them to fill out the application and get that submitted because that's the data, the reason we're collecting it early okay. is um, to actually set the routes and determine how many routes we're going to need. The transfer bus, though, is something that people have requested, so we're certainly going to make every effort to do that. All right. So yeah. is there a place to check off transfer bus, or would you just write on there that 
You're um, only interested in the transfer loss. If they're only interested in that, they should note that right on the form. Yes. Yeah. I will do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> George, did you hand yours in? Of course. Yeah, <laughs> right. You were late last year. Any other comments? <laughs> or, or questions that aren't yeah, able to it said, right, fill it out. Wow. <laughs> All right, moving right along. <laughs> we did receive a letter, um, a return letter response from Senator Moore, and I share it with you uh, here. This was in regards to the legislative action that was being encouraged uh, by the Mass Association of School Superintendents. So I share that with you, with you and appreciate his response um, to it. Uh, the FY16 budget, just making you aware that we have no new information. So at this point, I think that we stay, or my recommendation would be that you stay uh, with the budget that has currently been approved, the $23,488,154. Uh, that's the number that town meeting has been apprised of. So we need a motion, or are you all set? No. All set. Okay. Yes, through the chair, all set. Uh, the next mm -hmm. item is the school building committee, the issue regarding the um, vinyl fence. So we did, there were a few questions that the committee had asked at the last meeting, one about the temperature and whether there was any possibility of causing any damage to the vinyl fence due to the heat, uh, as well as the plantings and perhaps what some additional plantings might cost should you opt to stay with the chain link fence. Um, at this morning's construction meeting, and actually last week as well, we had discussions about it. One issue to note is what they've realized in recalculating it, the $10,000, $10,300 that they had um, indicated was going to be the cost to do a change order, a change from chain link to six foot vinyl, uh, was actually incorrect. It should have been a little over $12,000 to make that change. Um, so that's one piece of information. What Mr. Moore from Lamar Pagano indicated today is without knowing um, the temperature and how much of a fire that they do in there, they'd really need those calculations to determine. Um, what he did indicate though is that um, where originally the tower from what used to be the Little League field there was about 58 feet away. The tower now to the closest plantings or chain link fence is about 30 feet and the furthest point is about 38 feet. Um, certainly not scientific, but people sitting at the meeting last week felt that it should not be a concern in terms of melting. Um, based on that $12,000 figure, I did ask um, what if more mature plantings were to be added and they had done that and added in um, a substantial number of them and the approximate cost to do that was about $15,000. Uh, but again, it was substantial, substantial number of plants um, that they had added. So I share that with you um, for your consideration. I know now that the weather is starting to warm slightly and hopefully will continue to do so. Um, they are hoping to have an answer, um, hopefully this evening, because um, they're going to need to start <coughs> planning for, or if not, certainly by April 1st, but the sooner the better, I think. So Please. question. So it's it, if we went with chain link and more plantings, the more plantings would be $15,000. Mm -hmm. Or leave plantings the way they are, and then the vinyl would be 12000 Correct. Instead of the chain link. So there's actually three choices. You could simply leave the four-foot chain link that's there with the plantings already designed. Yep. You could um, leave the four-foot chain link fence and add in some additional plantings. Um, 15000 was the max, and you could recommend a lower number if mm. you want it up to a value. Or the third option is to go with a vinyl fence. Mm -hmm. Any comments? Well, 15000 worth of plants seems excessive. <laughs> I, I, I would recommend a lower amount, I think. I would agree with that. What is, what is the, the benefit of having any plants done this this early couldn't isn't this something that we could do down the road on our own dig a few holes and throw some plants in or what what, what benefit sure so doing them now would be paid for through the project 
Um, and, and if we're going to do this, I would recommend doing it now. It would be a landscape designer, even if it's at a lesser value, uh, less number of plants. But they would know in terms of you know where to plant them, how far away to plant them, and it would be done in a nice design, yeah. I would say. And otherwise, it would come to the school committee mm -hmm. for you to come up with the money at a future date to pay for any additional plants. But where would the money come from if we decide to go the planting or the vinyl? Is that from the project? Right? Comes from the project, right? So through the chair, um, the school building committee is looking for a recommendation from the school committee. So based on that recommendation, they would then need to vote it next week. Um, <laughs> oh no! <laughs> so much for going home. <laughs> it's <dating. laughs> you missed us already. <laughs> I missed this because I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Aren't you people done? He was, he was excited. Hour. Give him a break. Another hour? No. Or at least. Fifteen minutes. <laughs> you wish. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Thank you. I have a question about that, though. To Gail's point, so just with the way that the project works, or is working, mm. if it still comes out of the project, what do we lose by gaining $15,000 worth of plants? So how does it directly impact what the kids would be getting? Because personally, I would rather my kids have mm -hmm. carpet or mm -hmm. black. You know, something to that, but they know. Yep. Okay. That, that's my personal thing. Through the chair, um, there is contingency money that's available. So what I can state to you is, and in, this is assuming the school building committee approved it, it would not have any impact on, say, um, any part of the building, quite honestly at all more supplies or anything like that? No, nope. correct. Correct, it would not. Either way, um, I would say I'm not in support of $15,000 worth, worth of additional plantings. No, I believe that. Yeah. Even with the plantings, sorry, George, but even sorry. with the plantings I already got going up there, you're still going to need $15,000 more. Through the chair, that was in response to a question that the committee asked last right. time was, okay. could we ask for some bigger plants and some yeah. more plants? So that was the response um, that they had designed. I shared this morning, that seemed, when I first heard the number, I was surprised by it. I mm -hmm. thought it seemed like an awful high number. I did say, well, I don't know what the committee would feel, but if they wanted to go that route, instead of the vinyl fence or the vinyl it's up to you right. but if you wanted to stay with the chain link you could certainly if you wanted some more mature plants or trees you could say up to a value of x dollars yeah. and they would design based on it based oh, on that okay. amount of money so you certainly could do that and the and, mm -hmm. and the benefit as dr brunel said is that they would do the planting where my yeah. idea to do the planting. <laughs> <laughs> we'll later, so. Yeah, we're not looking for redwoods out yeah. there. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> so, Near woods or anything. Just, just uh, the original chain week, the amount figure, was that 4000 Uh I don't actually know the we, original chain link. That's, no, that's always been, through the chair, I'm sorry, always been designed as part of the project. Yeah. This was just yeah. all above and beyond oh, this correct. ten thousand that turned into twelve thousand. No, fifteen thousand. Now it's fifteen thousand. Yeah. Right. How about how about um, we cut it more than in half and say five thousand dollars worth of plants to dress up the original chain link fence? It's it's a savings mm. of mm. at least five five thousand for five to seven thousand anyway. That's what I was I thinking. And, and we, we could be selective with that $5,000, and, and um, I don't know who would do this, but take a look at it from a couple different angles outside and say, you know what, we'd like to, looking from this direction, we'd like to see something there, maybe blocking that post, or maybe we'd like to, to see it blocking that corner of the building or well, that window. Like Mary Ellen said, though, if you give them a set price, they can balance it off. Yeah, correct. That's, that's, that's their job. They can do that. Right. Yeah. Yeah, even if it was, even if it was them drawing up the visuals on, on a computer, mm -hmm. however they'd like to do it, but that would be something I would be comfortable with, mm -hmm. considering where we where we came from. That's uh, the way I look at it. Plantings aren't wasted, even if you check if the fire tower goes away and you decide to do something with that property. Plantings can be moved, mm -hmm. yes. So you don't lose them. Whereas a vinyl fence, what do you do with it? Right. right. You know. So I think maybe that's the way to go. 
And I would say even just from a maintenance standpoint, the, the, the vinyl fences need to be need to be cleaned. They get pretty dusty. Who knows what would soot would do to them. Yeah. And um, also, if there was ever graffiti, oh, it's always easy oh, to go over a chain link fence. Oh, think of that. <coughs> yeah. So I would, if, if we're comfortable with that number <coughs> and that idea, I would entertain a motion. Make that motion to approve the retention of the plan to keep the chain link fence and $5,000 of additional planting. Do I have a second? You do. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 There's a vote. Thank you for that update. Sure. <coughs> um, the school building master plan team uh, will not actually officially meet until May, but we actually um, are meeting a subset of us that are working on the construction starting every Tuesday morning. So I'll <coughs> provide you some updates uh, regarding that. In terms of the school building reuse disposition advisory group, I included in the packet for you a memo. Um, it's my understanding there's been some discussions about perhaps moving the superintendent's office out of um, Randall, 5 West Street, and moving it to Town Hall. I wanted to share this with you um, before it is sent off to them, um, just to let them know that, A, we're content to remain here, certainly, mm -hmm. uh, but if there is a decision made, uh, because they have some alternative use for this space, outlined, and again, <coughs> assuming you were to approve of it, um, outlining what our needs would be in terms of space needs, storage needs, um, a school committee room that we would need to be able to uh, present live meetings from uh, the professional development room and as I noted on here uh, obviously we would need ADA compliant um, spaces at least the school committee room the superintendent's office if mm -hmm. an individual was to come in we could certainly accommodate them otherwise if needed um, in storage areas we have a requirement um, state mandated records retention to be sure that we maintain those um, and then in the final paragraph um, as we look and I'll mention this um, shortly in the meeting as we look to um, our preschool program and potentially expanding it that if we are moved out of here and if there is no need for this space and, and I'm not aware um, of any that's been identified yet we could certainly use this as a preschool center um, should you ever choose to go in that direction so I just wanted to provide them with some information and some options of or of what we would need okay any comments so who, who's going to make the decision whether you're moving or not? Is it something you're part of, or do you feel more comfortable just staying here? Or what, what seems to be the okay. catch-all? So, so just in terms of the school reuse committee, all, all we're deciding is on what we would recommend based on um, an, upcoming, an upcoming public hearing that we're going to hold. It's to be scheduled at this point. It may mm -hmm. definitely be on May 4th. Um, it's also being taken into consideration with what are the other needs of the other um, civic organizations in town. Um, if, if the town could use that solely for town hall use, if it's going to be easier for citizens to come in and you know access the um, superintendent's office while they're at <coughs> excuse me at town hall. Um, in addition, the, um, it was raised for attention that there may also be potential for the town to make money through using this building for other for other um, services or to offer it as you, you propose here for a man um, for additional preschool yes. so so there are several different options in play all of the the committee will do is we'll take what we hear from the towns from from all of the um, citizens in town as well as um, people such as the housing authority we'll make a recommendation and at that point in the town it's my understanding that they would need to actually have a vote whether they accept or not. And then they have to go through the next step of getting bids. So I don't see this as taking place anytime soon because either way, the buildings, once it changes in purpose, they would need to um, made a ADA compliant, which is quite a lengthy process. Mm -hmm. So so it won't be kind of handed down. There are several layers of people who have to approve and decide. So, um, and we actually have another meeting um, in two weeks on Monday. So 
where we'll actually have the housing authority come and speak. Oh. So, uh, Mr. Page, I mean, just hearing about this and reading the letter, that it just seems like with the town hall the way it is now, there's really not that much room in there. How would they, you know, there's a lot of looking into do to have this move down to the town or up to the town hall. Mm -hmm. It just seems to be a little bit much. I, I, through the chair, I think what they're thinking is if they reused Mary D. So Mary D. would be oh, an okay. annex of the town hall, I think is what that's, they were thinking. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's yeah. correct. Oh, so oh, I think oh, we're yeah. taking that into fact like, who else the town hall um, we need to move over. If work needs to be done in the town hall, we need to shift the entire staff to Mary D. for a time. But um, at this point, we're just trying to um, continue to gather information about you know, which parties mean what, what's best right. to based on zoning, parking, and stuff. Okay, thanks. No Anything else? Question. Um, I don't see the school department having to go to the town hall that often for business, mm -hmm. or am I incorrect in that thinking? I mean, it is, a, is it a monthly thing, or a couple times a year, or? Um, mm -hmm. Through the chair, we do, Mr. Barber does need to um, bring up when we have uh, collections for our satellite or galaxy or preschool, so there are turn-ins that need to happen um, for them. Uh, we do have a mail run that occurs three days a week, and we stop up at town hall to get mail, and we share it, you know, amongst each other. But but there are okay. trips but that need to go there. You don't there. particularly have to go there for meetings all the time. Right? Oh, no, no. 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 And, and yeah. we have meetings regularly with the town's administration, and we generally um, bounce back and forth between locations. Yeah. What, uh, the sentiment that we're getting from a lot of the um, parents in town is that it would be nice to have the superintendent's office close to town hall. Just should they need to do you know, uh, several different items of business for the day. Uh, mm -hmm. or, and really just to feel a little bit more connected with, with um, the superintendent's office. Mm -hmm. okay. but, the, but again, we're still gathering. It's, yeah. it's early, early in the process and right. Who and knows? now all the parents will be coming out here because of the middle, new middle school, so <laughs> right. it won't seem so far away. Mm. <laughs> they, they may come to us w with something down the road that's favorable, and, and, and we might uh, be excited to move. But as of now, they may not. They, they may not. As of now, we're we're comfortable, and we'll continue to take your suggestions and hear <laughs> more. Uh, and again, you know, that would also just um, to further clarify if there's anything in this building that is an ADA compliant. That then further compounds um, trying to put together the pieces of the, pu of the puzzle, not only for budget, but if it, if this building were to also change use, that's an entire, that that's that's another layer mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. complexity that mm -hmm. we would have to do when we were moving that we would consider. Well. So this is still a while. All kinds of thinking. We'll let you guys so take care of that. I do want to know that all that being said, at least for the first that's part of the process. The communities would like to have a suggestion, uh, um, basically have our component wrapped up by June 1st, just in terms of what we would suggest, and then the next the bids. Excellent. Well, thank you for that update. We now move on to new business. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, shared with you in here, we've recently received notification that the warrant for the Springtown meeting not the March or April 1, the May 5th <laughs> annual town meeting. The warrant has opened and will close on Monday at 4 o'clock. So Mr. Barber has prepared. These are ones that we have, that we bring forward uh, on an annual basis. The Medicaid one, the regard, one regarding the high school gym and health recreation trust fund. And the third one we'll need to... Um, confirm with Mr. Uh, Kazanovich whether this will come forward at the annual town meeting or the fall special town meeting. Uh, it's come in the past, but we wanted to put it in here just as a discussion point. So it is our recommendation that you approve these warrant articles as presented. I would entertain a motion. I'll make a motion that we approve these warrant articles as written here. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 A
Uh, the next item is I updated for you the school choice report. Uh, we, this was first presented and was a copy was provided in your packet back in um, 2010 when the school committee first accepted school choice at the middle school and high school. What you have before you here is also updated information that includes last school year as well as the current school year to date. Um, I looked at this as I have over the past few years in terms of attendance, uh, discipline, participation in athletics and fine arts, as well as report card grades. And what you see, uh, which mirrors what was seen back in 2010 and, uh, originally, is that our school choice students are positive contributing members of our teams, both at the middle school and high school, uh, whether it's attendance, discipline, grades, or participation. Um, their rates mirror, or in some t cases, are slightly better than um, our entire population at those two respective schools. So um, you had previously voted to continue in the school choice program uh, previously, but it is my recommendation, and we've had lots of discussions with Mr. Hanfield and Mr. Gagnon, as well as Dr. Lose, um, that based on this information, that you add five slots to Auburn Middle School and 10 to Auburn High School. Based on our enrollment projections, there is ample space um, to address both of these. I would entertain that motion. I'll make that motion that we add uh, the recommended numbers that Dr. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Five. just said. Five, five to Auburn Middle and, five to Auburn Middle and 10 to Auburn High. Do I have a second? I'll second. Discussion? No, it just seems I went through this data at home and the school choice students have, obviously they want to be here and mm -hmm. it shows in their attendance and their behavior and, and their taking AP classes and they are. everything about it. They are. They, they want to be here, they want to be get a good education. Mm -hmm. They're here for the right reasons, I guess, mm -hmm. that's what I want to say. Anything else? The only thing I worry about is taking too many in and having a problem with overcrowding in our schools. Mm -hmm. And you're saying you're definitely comfortable with that issue. I am, through the chair. Um, we, we conferred um, with the principals and uh, that is our goal. We certainly don't want to do anything ever to jeopardize the education of our Auburn students and I'm very comfortable that this does not. Okay, thank you. That was my biggest. Mm -hmm. I would just say thank you for the, for the thorough reports. Um, Again, this, I think this may be my third time seeing, mm -hmm. seeing these reports, and uh, they're all favorable, um, very similar. And um, as you said, Gail, it seems like they're, they're really making the grade. And so we're, we're, um, we're happy to have them and, and happy to continue this process as, as long as we continue to get good students. And yeah. as you said, Wayne, if things don't get overcrowded and we have the room right. for them, why not? Yeah. <clears throat> all in favor? Aye. 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 Um, the next item, some pretty exciting news. We're, we're very excited about it. Um, as you may have seen, our cross-country uh, teams oftentimes are running for the high school and middle school out and around in the streets and, and areas. Um, as our move over here, we've looked at land that the water commissioners actually um, are responsible for. And they have given, I, I included in your packet here, my original letter to them to actually make a true cross-country course that would be out. Um, there's actually uh, trails out there now, oftentimes used by ATV, so some work would be required um, for them. But I just wanted to make you aware of this. We're in the early stages of it. I can tell you, though, that just today, I believe, or perhaps yesterday, we did receive written approval. Uh, they had given their verbal approval. So um, Mr. Barber looked into, in terms of liability, and through our current athletic insurance, the students, we would be covered by using that area there. We talked at construction um, meeting this morning and last week about some potential funding. I actually will be putting in a memo to the SBC to request that they approve a fence to um, prevent the students from going to an area out in the back over here uh, that's got a, a pretty substantial drop based on what mm -hmm. had been there at Trolley before. Mm -hmm. um, so they're working up a price and I will 
send that to the SBC for next week's meeting. It will require us going to conservation, but I think the potential, um, the cross-country coach has actually walked out there, both the middle school and high school, and are just so excited to think that our kids would not be running on Route 12, Route 20, you know, the streets and things, and actually have a, a legitimate course. Yes. Um, so does, with this, I guess be rated for competition as well, so that we could actually host other schools here. For the for the companies. length, sure. The length of it, um, there are minimum lengths and there are maximum lengths. And as noted in here, the length of it would allow um, for our students to run. In terms of um, formal competitions beyond just the middle school or high school using it. I, I can't be certain about that. I'd have to check and see, only that I don't know what the, the regulations are. But I can tell you that the coaches um, were very excited at the potential of this. So if possible, we could certainly look to do things like that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. that would bring out families and all the Absolutely. Well, I think this is a great idea because I've always cringed oh, yeah. Yeah. when I've seen the students <coughs> going through Jerry Square mm -hmm. and on Swanson Road with right. the, the traffic coming right. off of right. 290. <coughs> I, this yeah. would be great. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, because there's always stragglers that are more by themselves. Absolutely. And this would be a much better place for them. Right. 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 Harrington, did you have a question? Yeah. I just had a comment. Maybe we can use the vinyl fence money and put it towards <laughs> this. I'd, uh, I'd much rather see the money yeah. spent here. As, as Wayne just said, are we going to have another fence right. discussion? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm passing we this to, one. Will we have to name the fence? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm no. kidding. I want it to be the Harrington Gateway. Or no, I, mean, <laughs> I think that's right there. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, we now move on to... Upcoming events. I, I actually, <laughs> um, just prior to sharing those, I did just want to pr um, provide you an update. There will be a full report at the April 1st meeting, but uh, as you know, as part of the strategic plan, uh, expanding our preschool was a, a point that was discussed time and again, and you saw in the, the recent report. So a preschool study team has been um, meeting, and most recently we are in the process of getting registrations for next year. And what we're finding is because our three-year-old students who are already in place move up as four-year-olds, uh, it doesn't leave any spots for new four-year-olds who may not be in a preschool. So based on that information, there are uh, at least 12 students who would be interested. So we will be coming back to you uh, with a proposal to potentially expand our preschool. It's, uh, it would be self-supporting, so there would not be any operating budget impact. It would be a tuition-based uh, program. But also, at the same time, um, statewide as, wide, as well as nationally, and I'm sure you've seen things, um, there's just great emphasis on early childhood education and really promoting and getting children in um, and supporting them in their very early years. So what we'd like to do is send out, much like what we did years ago with full day kindergarten, to send out a non-binding survey to the, four, the parents of the four-year-olds to find out if we did offer a full day class next year for four-year-olds, uh, it would be by lottery because we'd only have room for one, use it as a pilot and then collect some data and see is this the direction that we want to go in. So uh, I wanted to make you aware we're going to send um, that survey out. It's non-binding us, but um, if we get back that no people are not interested in the full day for four-year-olds, we wouldn't even pursue it. My suspicion is, because we've heard anecdotally from families, uh, it's challenging for some families to bring their child to and from preschool for two and a half hours a day. Mm. So uh, we'd like to use this opportunity to, to gauge their interest, and we'll report to you at April 1st, but I wanted you to know where. And where would the classroom be? Uh, we're actually looking to possibly have it at the high school, right nearby the two preschool classrooms that are there now. But there are some other opportunities for the pilot year. Mm -hmm. um, if it were to work, as I noted in here, if Randall was ever to be vacant, we could look to here. Mm -hmm. um, but in at least one of our other schools, um, Pakachog, for example, when Mary Deague was up there, there could be some spots there as well. Now, do you use the high school students at all? They do. The they do. They go down and, and they help out in those classrooms. Yeah, um, nice as opportunity for it, the students. Great opportunity. And as part of the preschool <clears throat> study team, uh, there were members of the group who went out and visited area uh, preschool programs. And actually, Shrewsbury has a, a great model that they use that they have 
um, a very formal structured class, three classes that actually that students at Shrewsbury High take, and they go in and, and, and serve like as a practicum or internship mm -hmm. in there. But the preschool teachers have reported they have an awful lot of support from high school students, and it's a great, the kids, oh. the preschool students love having them, the high yeah. school students love going in, so it's a great, and great relationship. And have a chance to see if that's something they want to pursue in college. Exactly, right? mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Nice opportunity. And then in terms of upcoming events, um, the sing-along, actually, this is uh, Music in the Schools Month, <coughs> and Bryn Mawr has had their sing-along this evening. Mary D. has theirs tomorrow night. Um, number of events going on, um, field trips taking place, and the All Children's Choir um, taking nothing away from our uh, upper grade students is mm -hmm. always really very enjoyable. Uh, it's on next Friday, actually, at 6.30 at the high school. I'd just like to say that Mary D's is tonight. Is Mary tomorrow. D's is tonight, yeah. yeah. Um, I said it the wrong way. Yeah. We were at a leadership team meeting. Mrs. Chase was going back <laughs> for the S tonight. <laughs> Bryn Mars is tomorrow night. Thank you, yes. Do not go to Mary D tomorrow night. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> right. You'll be singing along. And it is over at Mary D right now, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Mm. All right, and that's it for <coughs> new business, and we move on to business and financial. Good evening, Mr. Barbara. Thanks for waiting patiently. No problem. Always a pleasure. Uh, through the chair, um, the, the first document we'd like to talk about is transfers. You'll see two handouts. Uh, the first one is transfers for um, budgetary items that are within the same series, such as items for the We the People program. Uh, encumbrances for supplies, also some payroll encumbrances being transferred between uh, similar series, as well as um, uh, items for tuition. In addition to that, you'll see, which does not need school committee approval, again, just for informational purposes. The second one in your file will be transfers that do need school committee approval. Um, the first one is for $20,000, which relates to funding uh, building improvements for 10 Swanson Road. The second one is to correct encumbrances that are relating to building improvements and equipment uh, acquisitions for two of our other building schools, the Rimmar and Package Shop. I would next take a motion. A motion that I don't see here. I'll make a motion. approve the transfer to proposal, Mr. Barber. You always do that. So do I have a second? Oh, I'll second it. <laughs> Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, in addition, in your packet, you'll see uh, a document for the revolving accounts and special revenue funds. Uh, this is your uh, monthly update that you can use to identify what we currently have in each of these respective accounts. Uh, similar to the past couple of months, the only one that you'll see a credit balance is our school lunch account. And that's primar primarily because we deal with, obviously, revolving monies coming in to utilize the cost of operations for this uh, school lunch program. And because at the beginning of the year, when we have our salaries, respectively, for all the staff, we have to encumber the entire salary amount. So we use that as our starting point, and then we work to reduce that or eliminate that deficit under the chair. Do you have any questions on the revolving or other special revenues account? I just have a question on the school lunch. I know you raised the price much first. Did that, um, I assume that money has helped pay the bills. Has that affected students taking hot lunch in any way or? With some communications I've had with uh, Ms. King, who's our mm -hmm. uh, food service right. director, um, actually the accounts for our student sales have actually, they've actually increased slightly. There has yeah. not been any reduction and that's with the increase in pr uh, the, price, the pricing, excuse me, that we had implemented for all three levels of school. Okay. That's good because they started sending the menus home at some point, so mm -hmm. well, that probably helped too. I think not to speak on behalf of the Food Service no. Department, but I know that there's been a handful of initiatives as well that they're trying to do to implement to obviously uh, appease the, the students that are, that are coming into the, the picture for obviously having lunch within the school. Yeah. That's with modifying the lunching, uh, the menus, and you know, to make them a little, even a little bit more appealing. Okay. But with all those items that Mrs. King has been doing, it's obviously uh, been a very positive uh, perspective yes. for the Food Service Department. Okay. That's good news. Excellent. Any other comments, questions? Yeah, I think they added little incentives, too. If you get hot lunch, it's like a little game. Sticker day. Sticker day, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. I heard okay. That. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Oh, yeah. yeah. Stickers are very important. My child still doesn't care, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I think it sounds fun. <laughs> Did you get your sticker? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, your house. I think being able to My get the, the students who, every student sees the food service department on a daily basis. So I think by doing some of these small little things too, that interaction with individuals that they're already mm -hmm. seeing normally is, is also making it more, uh, I guess it's an advertisement within an advertisement by having something small that can kind of just attract the students. Mm -hmm. And sometimes if they know if they can pull a sticker off of a tray and they find out that that's going to provide them something as simple as a, a, a thing of milk, you know, that makes it more attractive for the students to feel like they want to be involved with it as well. And that's turning around to obviously having them buy lunch and by doing that, they're actually having something that's very nutritious that's really meeting all of the food spectrums for what they need to absorb in the system. So, with Excellent. that being said. Sounds good. <laughs> Great. Uh, and then in addition, um, you'll also find in your packet our current year-to-date budget report, which gives you a, uh, an update as far as all of the operational costs, what we've had from a budgetary plan, what we've already spent, as well as what we've encumbered year-to-date for any of the operational costs that we need from the school budget. Any questions? Seeing none. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. For us, Mr. Barber. Thank you. You're welcome. And we do need to go into executive session. Briefly, yes. I would entertain a motion. No. Oh. <laughs> I make the motion to enter executive <laughs> session for Mass General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 21A2, to discuss strategy with respect to contract negotiations with union personnel and non-union personnel. Do I have a second? Second that motion. Roll call vote. Mrs. Yes. Arrington? Yes. Ms. Sutton? Yes. Mrs. Holloway? Yes. Mr. Page? Yes. Mr. Scobie? Yes. There's a vote. Good night, everyone. Yes.